The best thing about America, it truly is a land of opportunity. It's just like the Backstreet Boys said. I don't care who you are, where you're from, what you did. You can be anything in this country, especially in our rapidly expanding Nazi industry. See, to compete with the many diversity, equity, and inclusion models succeeding elsewhere, even the swastika is becoming more inclusive to keep up and stay competitive. Of course, it was just a few weeks ago that a very authentic Hispanic Nazi shot up a Dallas area mall right after he got his fresh swastika and SS tattoos to show off to no one on some obscure Russian site that nobody looked at except for the people who just so happened to find it to fit perfectly into a Nazis are everywhere so watch out narrative. And if you have any questions about that, don't. Ethnic Nazis are breaking barriers almost every week now, or in this case, at least trying to break barriers. Maybe not succeeding completely, but it is the effort that counts. Just before 10 p.m. on Monday in Washington, D.C., a 19-year-old man drove a U-Haul truck into traffic barricades at Lafayette Square. This is the park on the north side of the White House. And one of many surprises about this obviously legitimate, very racist terrorist attack against the president is just how gentle this attacker was in driving his giant truck against these barricades. I guess he did give it some pretty good gas, but only from about 10 feet away. Sure, he's trying to murder the president and his family, but he doesn't want to disrupt others on the street while he does. He wouldn't be so reckless as to back into oncoming traffic. He's very respectful and courteous with his presidential assassination attempts. And no, I'm not inferring that intent. Presidential assassination is the official intent. The driver now faces multiple charges, including assault with a dangerous weapon, reckless motor vehicle operation, trespassing, destruction of federal property, and yes, threatening to kill, kidnap, or injure the president and or his family. And how do we know that's what this guy was trying to do? Well, apparently upon confrontation, he said, hello, fellow not feds, I am here to kill Biden and to take over the White House myself. Not only that, but investigators also found what else? A notebook of writings possibly explaining intent too. A manifesto that I'm sure we'll all be reading very shortly, unless of course the guy turns out to be trans, in which case everything he wrote is a grave public security threat that'll never see the light of day, but it doesn't matter anyway. We don't even need to see the writings at all, because this guy's motive is most clearly explained by the swastika flag that he had proudly decorating his truck cabin. Investigators removing a flag with a swastika from the scene. Yes, as is totally normal procedure, the crime scene investigators laid out the swastika flag prominently, neatly ironed, just as the Nazis like it, and just as the news photographers like it too. The perfect image to use for their story thumbnails. And as is also totally normal, it looks like the truck bed was entirely empty. So I guess all the prisoners he was hauling to Auschwitz must have escaped. That is great news. But of course, this isn't just exactly like the Holocaust. It's also exactly like January 6th, too. That was much of the reporting on Tuesday morning. This comes as the White House has beefed up security measures after a number of security breaches in Washington in recent years, including the January 6th riots at the Capitol. You have to draw a line from uh, this apparent attack on the White House by someone bearing a Nazi flag to at least some of the people, it's hard to say how many, but some of the people involved in the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Which sounds ridiculous, but actually, it's not a totally wild comparison. Investigators have confirmed that Ray Epps was riding shotgun in this U-Haul. He was questioned and released at the scene. That, of course, was former FBI Deputy Director Andy McCabe comparing this event to January 6th. And that wasn't the only immediate conclusion to be drawn. He said this is obviously yet another episode of white supremacist terrorism that so commonly happens all over the country these days. For so, so long, um, we've been hearing um, not only from the president, but, but even the FBI director that 
white supremacists and far right wing extremists are the yeah. biggest threat to this country. I guess they're right. This is the number one, certainly the number one terrorist threat that they're tracking right now. That is domestic violent extremists and particularly domestic violent extremists who are motivated by anti uh, black uh, racial uh, sentiments. Right. So this fits very neatly within that warning that we've heard again and again. Well, I take it he must have some credible information then to be so confident that this is a crazed Nazi bent on presidential assassination to protect the Aryan race. So what's this guy's name then? Is it Adolf Murderschmidt or Fritz von Gaschamber or what? Pretty close, but no, not quite. It's Sai Varshith Kandula, actually. Apparently a veteran of the German Wehrmacht's Far Eastern offensive, as in the farthest Eastern, like go to Stalingrad and then just keep walking. Hitler was probably just sending him home, actually. Either that or this kid thinks he's honoring his Hindu heritage, but picked the other swastika by accident. Whatever happened during McCabe's commentary, the attacker's identity was not yet reported, but the coverage on CNN didn't get any better once it was, even when they had his identity. CNN chose not to show a photo. The suspect's name, Sai Varsish Kandula, 19 years old, from Chesterfield, Missouri. John? Look, that is not a small U-Haul truck either. That is a big U-Haul truck, and I think we're still waiting for new information on possible motivation. Seeing that swastika flag inside that truck is chilling. In fairness, though, that was right as the news was breaking. CNN's photo editor hadn't finished the touch-up work yet. They had to get the photo broadcast ready before they could show it. No, they didn't actually make him white. They just opted not to show him at all, at least initially. But in many other ways, there's not much to show about this guy anyway. Very few details have emerged so far. This guy apparently lives near St. Louis and came all the way over to DC to commit this obviously legitimate Nazi-inspired terrorist attack. And I hate to be so automatic with the Fed button. Fed, 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 Fed. No, I don't. I love that button, actually. But what more plausible alternative am I supposed to believe? The story as told that some... SS Hindu wants to kill the president so badly that he came all this way just to drive his truck at five miles an hour from a quarter mile away and then surrender immediately and drop a swastika flag to tell us all that the Reich will rise again at a very slow and easily stoppable pace, or that just like every other area of the federal workforce, diversity is valued over competence even in the false flag department. A low effort hoax deserves a low effort response. So I won't be shamed for mine unless and until the evidence proves this actually is Hitler's Hindu apprentice. But as of now, we have almost no information on him. He graduated high school in Chesterfield, Missouri in January, 2022. Apparently he flew from St. Louis to DC and rented the U-Haul truck there. He has no criminal record, at least none known at this time, and is currently being held in custody. His charge of threatening the president carries up to a five-year prison sentence. According to a law enforcement source, Kandula is an American citizen, not previously known to the FBI or on any watch lists. He brought no explosives or firearms to commit this attack. So I guess it kind of was exactly like January 6th after all. But... According to some reports, he didn't just threaten Biden upon arrest, he threatened Vice President Kamala Harris, too. So we're supposed to believe it was a white supremacist attacking a black woman. Actually, it was just Indian on Indian violence. I can't wait to hear the cackle queen try to explain it otherwise. And maybe she won't. Maybe these supposed multicultural Nazi attacks are just too silly to campaign on individually. So... Maybe we won't get the enjoyment of hearing Joe and Kamala tell these specific stories with a straight face, but they will still pad the stats on which the president wants to frame his re-election campaign, formally announced just last month, because it's becoming apparent that this supposed rise in Nazi terrorist attacks corresponds directly with the president's campaign need for them. That's been the work of my first term to fight for our democracy. But you know, around the country, MAGA extremists are lining up to take on those bedrock freedoms. When I ran for president four years ago, 
I said we're in a battle for the soul of America. And we still are. That we're a nation where we give hate no safe harbor. We believe that everyone is equal. Well, I guess he's right. Hispanic and Indian neo-Nazis are not the soul of the nation. He's got a point there. But the thing is, they're not the soul of any nation because they're not real, at least in any large-scale sense. They are a fictional creation pushed with the intent of scaring you. Because scaring you into compliance is often much easier than convincing you. To that theme, in a well-written Supreme Court opinion on the Title 42 border policy last week, Justice Neil Gorsuch sharply criticized the lockdown mentality since 2020, what he called the greatest intrusion on civil liberties in the peacetime history of this country. It's a little too late for my liking, but the wisdom is there. Gorsuch says the lesson is this. Fear and the desire for safety are powerful forces. They can lead to a clamor for action, almost any action, as long as someone does something to address the perceived threat. Well, if that's the case, then all that's necessary to gain and maintain power is the manufacturing of that perceived threat. So it could be a Chinese virus with a 99.9% .9 survival rate, but only St. Pfizer can guarantee you the other 0.1, or it could be violent Nazis everywhere that weirdly, you can only ever see through your TV or computer screen. When you see this sensationalism that does not match your everyday experience in the real world, you have to ask, who is creating that impression? Who is pushing that impression? And what do they stand to gain from it? But even that is wildly overthinking it, actually. We don't need some detailed analysis or some complex philosophy to know that Indian guys waving swastika flags are not a serious threat in this country, let alone a threat anywhere near as serious as the old man in the aviator glasses licking an ice cream cone while he watches the kids play. We don't need some enlightenment here. We need just the basic sense, just the instinct, that those most insistently telling us to be scared all the time are the only ones to actually be afraid of. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel, always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below, and especially over on Minds, that is at M L Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams, those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it, go.